Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Today is January 2nd, and we are in the year 2020. I want to welcome all of you listeners to the Spirit and Truth uh, podcast. My name is Mario Zamorano, and I'm one of the pastors of Recovery House of Worship. And of course, ours is a ministry, for those of you who know who we are already, ours is a ministry um, that's uh, somewhat unique because we serve to help people that are involved in 12-step recovery to connect with Jesus Christ and everything that, uh, that He's all about. And um, at this point, um, Recovery House of Worship is known by many people uh, in various parts of the world, not only in the United States. And so we uh, are amazed at what God has do- done with just um, a few pastors uh, in recovery, and um, the doors that God has opened for us to share the message with uh, so many. Um, So we thank you for joining us. We hope that um, this podcast will bless you uh, in many ways, particularly in the way of experiencing the love, the peace, the joy, and the hope that comes from being uh, in relationship with Jesus Christ And that, through His Word, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in our introduction here. Um, But just to give you a little bit of background on myself, uh, I've been an active member of a 12-step fellowship uh, since April 1st, 1990. That is the last time that um, I was uh, addicted to drugs. Um, I entered into a uh, hospital and uh, received some help in some direction. Um... I got over the uh, whole thing that comes with uh, heroin addiction, the withdrawals and all of that. Um, And interesting, um, I didn't know God before I came into the fellowship, uh, before I got clean. And for the first 12 years of being involved in the fellowship and being uh, absent of uh, drugs, um, my idea of God at that point was that I could make him uh, whatever I wanted him to be. Uh, In other words, the God I had in my life was merely a God that my mind created. Um, Just a mere projection of myself, actually. And I say mere because if my mind is going to create the God that I'm in relationship with, that God is not going to amount to very much. And the reality of that experience is that uh, I had become my own God. And for a guy like me, with a history of so many bad ideas and trouble with the law, uh, you know, so prone to self-destructive behavior, uh, my idea of God led me to more problems actually without drugs than I ever had when I was using drugs. And that's no wonder um, when you consider one of the readings in the 12-step fellowship that I'm a part of that says that drugs was just a symptom of a deeper-rooted problem. Um, What I know today is that that deeper-rooted problem was a desperate spiritual void that I had had uh, all my life. And so after 12 years of being clean um, and the prayers of so many people uh, around me that were in relationship with Jesus Christ that knew what I was desperate for, that knew what I needed even when I didn't know, um, they they prayed. Uh, Apparently God heard their prayers and... um, what God did, he, he works in um, in ways that uh, confound my mind, at least my mind. And so what God did, the answer to those prayers, is that God unleashed uh, a perfect storm in my life. Um, I had been uh, arrested several times clean. Um, and um, those arrests had nothing to do with drugs, but uh, other things. Um, other areas where my life was unmanageable and uh, dysfunctional thoughts became a reality in my life and like that. And uh, eventually, uh, when I was um, 12 years clean, um, there was a secret grand jury that met and they served an indictment. And I was found myself in a lot of trouble with the FBI and the Department of Justice um, and at almost the very same time, my uh, sponsor um, had uh, passed away of an overdose. 
and uh, my whole life had been turned upside down, as God would have it. He was in control, but uh, my life was not. Uh, by this time, I was uh, with a woman that uh, I was not married to. Um, we had two children together, and uh, they were very worried, very scared, as were many of my loved ones. Um, they were brokenhearted, and uh, my whole family uh, was suffering. And again, the root of all of these problems came from a desperate spiritual void that I had that I was trying to fill up with money, with power, with relationships, with all kinds of different things that obviously could not fill me up. And so it was all of these circumstances that um, brought me to the place where I realized that if there really was a God, He had to be bigger than my limited mind could imagine. And uh, at that point, one Sunday morning, in a quiet whisper, I said to God, if you can forgive me and help me and change me, I will give you my whole life to do whatever you want with it. And I remember that morning in those words like it happened yesterday. Um, you know, they say that uh, you can't really know God until you really need God. And at that point, I really needed God. And I wanted to know Him uh, personally, without uh, any reservation, without any preconceived ideas. But the problem was that I didn't know how. I didn't know how to get to know Him personally. I had not even a clue of where you would begin with such a thing. But... Um, at that point, uh, I was cleaning out my closet and I found a book that my brother-in-law, a good Christian man, actually had given me maybe a couple of years uh, prior. And um, I just put it uh, in, a, in a pile of uh, old clothes that I had planned on giving away. And I was probably planning on giving that book away as well. But the title of the book was The Jesus I Never Knew. And the author of the book was a guy named Philip Yancey. And um, I had only gone to school up to the ninth grade. So my reading skills were um, nothing to brag about. Um, but what I found in that book brought me to a place where I could not put it down. I was reading that book all day, every day for about two weeks and um, from that day to this day, I have had an unquenchable appetite for the Word of God, books written on the Word of God, and things of that nature. And all of that has served to um, help me to know God in a way that I could have never imagined uh, before. And really, it's no wonder when you read um, the Gospel of John in chapter 1. Let me read it to you. In verse 1, John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. He was with God, and He was God. In verse 14 of the same chapter, it says, The Word became human and lived here on earth among us. He was full of unfailing love, and faithfulness and we have seen his glory the glory of the only son of the father and i'm reading that from the uh, new living translation bible but what it's actually telling us is very simple and very plain and that is that god himself took on the form of a human being a man and that man was the embodiment of the Word of God, and it dwelt among us. And it's referring, of course, to Jesus Christ, who dwelt among us 2,000 years ago. And so if you ever wanted to know what God Himself was really like, what His thoughts were, what His intentions were, the way He feels about you and I, you really need to go no further than to study the life of Jesus Christ. In doing so, you will know what God is all about. 
On the other hand, if we reject Jesus Christ, if we reject the gospel, then we are left only to our own thoughts and life experience and strange books and ideas and philosophies to try to figure it out for ourselves. And um, we could end up in a lot of uh, trouble, a lot of uncharted uh, water, spiritually speaking, that could amount to a very dysfunctional lifestyle, even while claiming that we have a relationship with a God. And I guess at that point, the question is, well, what God? And there, of course, we call to mind many people who have claimed that there are a lot of gods. You know, you, you can pick one, choose one, and uh, serve or get into a relationship with that God. Well, where that's concerned, the Bible has something to say about it, and it is found in... So here it is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, starting in verse 5. God himself says, I am the Lord, there is no other God. I have prepared you, even though you do not know me. So all the world from east to west will know there is no other God. I am the Lord, and there is no other. So where God is concerned, he makes it very clear that while we can imagine uh, pretend, actually, uh, that there are other gods that exist, God differs with that idea. And so that's where the trouble begins uh, with people who want to make God whatever they want him to be or want to imagine that there are other gods. Now, there is a starting point when we come to know Jesus Christ. Obviously, if we don't know him, we're left up to a lot of our own ideas, but we begin to grow. Um, as we get into the study of his word and look into his life and who he was. And in fact, the Bible says that as we do that, we will become more and more like him. So someone may say, well, Mario, what are your qualifications for a podcast like this? And um, what experience or uh, education do you have to study the Bible, and then to share it with other people. Well, to that, let me say that on one hand, uh, not much. On the other hand, maybe a little bit. You decide. Um, again, referring to the Bible in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse uh, 27, it says that God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. So uh, in, in that respect, I guess what qualifies me is the fact that I've been nothing more than a foolish man, uh, a weak man, uh, a base man, that is of the lower class, and uh, certainly despised, uh, at least for a good period of time throughout my life. But on the other hand, God has chosen me to do this. And um, I'll tell you just how uh, in a minute. Um, on the other hand, I did attend uh, Bible college uh, for a number of years, um, getting trained up in uh, how to study the Bible. Um, and, and various things in regards to that. Um, I mentioned before that I only went to school up to the ninth grade. And so, uh, prior to going to Bible college, and I didn't even know there was such a thing. Somebody had told me that I went, signed all of the necessary forms, got a bunch of paperwork, paid some fees, uh, only to find out on the first day of school that uh, I needed a high school diploma to attend college. Uh, I was so naive about academics and, and education that I didn't know that. And one young lady pulled me to the side uh, in administration and she informed me that um, she had all of my paperwork and everything except my high school diploma. I was very embarrassed. I told her that I would go home and get that. And of course, I didn't have it. So I inquired of some friends, and they told me that I could attend adult school, get a GED to my surprise, and by God's grace, um, not very educated at all. I acquired my GED, I believe, in less than 30 days. Went back to the Bible College. At that time, it was Life Pacific Bible College. And uh, it was there that I attended my first year. 
And after that, I discovered um, Calvary Chapel Bible College and completed my studies there. I got my little old degree and, um, and like that. Um, shortly after that, or actually during my period of time in Bible College, God, um, without any help from me, um, by His grace, opened up the doors for me to teach a Bible study at what was and might still be one of the largest drug treatment facilities in the nation. Um, it was in North Hollywood. And God had actually given the idea of a Bible study to uh, two men with uh, several decades in uh, recovery in the same 12-step fellowship that I belong to. Uh, That's actually uh, Chuck Gates and Jack Bernstein. And um, they... Uh, had recently come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, and um, they were wanting to start a Bible college. I'm sorry, not a Bible college, but a Bible study. And so um, I didn't know them very well at the time, but somebody had mentioned to them that, uh, well, my story and that I had been involved in, uh, in recovery and that I was now in Bible college. And so um, after meeting them, um, we decided to put this Bible study together. It was very small at first. Um, it was held in Jack's uh, conference room. But not too long after that, the word got out. We began to grow in number until we could no longer fit in Jack's conference room. And uh, Jack opened up a uh, large hall um, where we began to meet after that. Jack, who is originally from uh, from Brooklyn, New York, um, mentioned to me one evening that there were two guys also in recovery uh, teaching a Bible study in New York, and that that would probably be a good idea that I meet with them. And so I, I couldn't believe it. I, I thought, you know, self-centered guy that I am, I thought that I was the only one in the world who was teaching a Bible study to this population of people, people being in recovery. They're, they can be a pretty tough group. Um, but uh, Jack set things up, and uh, shortly after that, I met uh, Edwin Colon and uh, Raymond Ramos. Uh, they were very close friends, and they had begun a ministry called Recovery House of Worship in New York City, and um, we became very good friends, and after a couple of years of uh, prayer and consideration and really seeking God out, um, we decided that we should probably just come on board and, and become part of Recovery House of Worship, as I, it was already known throughout the recovery community, and so that's what we did, and then after a couple of more years, we planted the first Recovery House of Worship church here in Southern California. So that was our beginning. Um, that, of course, led to um, many visits to many different um, states within the United States. And, of course, um, some trips abroad where we met uh, many more people from different parts of the world who um, have come to know Jesus Christ through their 12-step uh, recovery process. And um, the numbers of believers around the world are growing steadily, and we're very excited to be a part of that. And as we go through the entire Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation in this podcast, another thing that we're going to be doing is um, some discussions, some interviews, if you will, with uh, many of the people around the world who have gone from drug addiction to 12-step uh, recovery or 12-step fellowship and um, have come into relationship with Jesus Christ. Also some um, uh, people who are involved in, uh, in music, in worship music and like that. Um, and so we hope that uh, those things will be uh, informing, that they will bless you and that you will come to know Jesus Christ if you don't know Him yet, and that you will grow into Christian maturity if you already know Him um, as we do these things through this podcast. And so, if you're one of the billions of people worldwide who have asked the question, Who am I? And what was I created for? Um, who is God? What would be His perfect will for my life? Or what is truth? 
um, we think that you're going to find some of the answers to those questions and other questions that you didn't even know you had as we go through the Bible. And the reason for that is because while you may not have known you had those questions, God has known that you've had those questions. Because the Bible makes it very clear that He has known us all of our lives, that He knew our name and what we would be like before we were even born, and that He even loved us before we ever knew Him or loved Him. That is what is so amazing about Jesus Christ, about the God of the Bible. In fact, His love, uh, and you'll realize this for yourself as you join us in this podcast uh, throughout the week, just listening as we go through the Word. His love is so profound, so deep, that it is unmatched and will always and forever be unmatched. And so we're looking forward to uh, this podcast experience with you guys. And we're going to be um, going through the Bible, not just going through the Bible, but going through the Bible in, in a very simple and plain language and using recovery language. Uh, as well. And I think if your experience is anything like mine, you're going to see that the 12 steps and um, the way that they're designed and their purpose work so um, compatibly, I'll say, with uh, the Word of God. Um, many of you may not know, but it is the Bible that the 12 steps came from. And we're going to even talk about um, uh, the history of 12 step fellowships and their beginning. And uh, I hope to interview a guy who did um, almost three decades of research on that. He lives in Hawaii, but he promised to come to California at some point and uh, allow us to interview him on this podcast. And so this is our introduction to the Recovery House of Worship podcast. Um, next time we meet, we will be beginning our um, journey through the Bible starting in the book of Genesis, the beginning of all things, creation. Um, and uh, we'll be able to look into God's mind from the very beginning. And uh, if you're like me and, the, and if you have the experience of many Christians, um, you will find that that is the most exciting thing you'll ever experience uh, in this life. The Bible is so uh, amazing. It is the pure, unadulterated Word of God. And in, in, a, in a sense, it's a love letter directly from God to each one of us. And while other books may claim to be the Word of God, none of them come with the evidence of, the, of that fact the way the Bible does. And it's been said that um, 10,000 hammers have attempted to shatter the authentic authenticity of the Bible, but the Bible has shattered them all. And so, um, again, we look forward to hearing back from you guys. Uh, Mario J. Zam at AOL is my email address. We are on Facebook as well, Recovery official Recovery House of Worship, Southern California. And so you can post questions or comments there. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we, a group of uh, recovering addicts, are going to be um, traveling to Israel uh, this January 12th to, through January 22nd. We'll be touring there. Uh, Pastor Raymond Ramos and I had intended on going there about a year, year and a half ago with our families. And um, as we mentioned that to other people, more and more people, to our surprise, in recovery wanted to go. And so we are a group of 63 people now that are be going to be going to uh, to Israel. And uh, it's going to be an exciting time for us. Um, we covet your prayers. Um, we ask you to pray for us for uh, safe journeys and that the hearts, minds, uh, eyes, and ears of those traveling with us will be open and that they will be able to uh, enjoy not only the, um, the, the, the cultural and uh, archaeological and geographical um, things to be enjoyed there, but that they will allow the God of the Bible to speak into their hearts and bring uh, transformation into their lives. Um, we're going to be baptizing in the River Jordan. We're going to be at the Dead Sea. We're going to be in Jerusalem. And what an exciting time it's going to be. We plan on doing another trip to Israel um, soon. 
And so um, if you've ever thought about doing something like that, um, please let us know and uh, we'll include you on our list. We'll be informing you um, to the date of uh, departure and uh, you'll be putting a deposit as a little payment plan that we'll be doing as well. Um, there are some other trips that uh, Pastor Raymond and I have been discussing, uh, one of them being the Footsteps of Paul, where we will um, visit uh, Greece and Rome and uh, some areas of Turkey where uh, the seven churches mentioned in the book of Revelation uh, had their place. Um, we also are talking about doing a um, marriage retreat um, somewhere in the world, uh, maybe Rome, maybe Paris. We haven't decided where yet, but certainly a romantic spot. And um, probably around the time of a uh, recovery convention that will be taking place in, in the same place at the same time so that we can enjoy that. So lots of good things that we have been praying and considering. Um, with that, stay tuned. Um, God bless you guys. I want to go ahead and close with uh, a song that was written and, and sung by a young lady who really inspired me to do this podcast. Her name uh, is Jennifer Johnson, but she is newly wed. And so her name now is Jennifer Johnson Tapia. And so I want to close with this song. And uh, before we do, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you are. We thank you for your great and awesome love that you have for each and every one of us. We pray, Father, that your spirit would be at the very center of this podcast, that you would lead us, that you would guide us in everything that we should do. And most of all, Father, that people, uh, that are in recovery all around the world will come to know you. And those who already know you would come to know you in a much deeper way through your word, Father. May you make the teaching simple, um, Lord. May you make it in a way that you could touch our lives in those secret places. And we pray against, Father, all of the works of the enemy and the disease that you would bring all of that to naught, Lord, that your foot would actually be on the neck of the enemy, silencing him in every way so that we can enjoy you seeing you as you truly are without any preconceived ideas. Lord, if there's one thing we know for sure, it is that we need you and we need you desperately. Come into our lives, Father. I pray for each person listening to this podcast, each family that they represent, and I pray that you would have a free, that they would actually grant you the freedom to work in their lives in any way that you desire. Thank you so much for joining us. And now a song uh, titled, I Am Elijah by Jennifer Johnson Tapia.
God bless you. And thank you for joining us.